You've heard of fintech and the fact that financial technology is the future of finance. But you also know that finance is quite broad and encompasses several domains like banking, investments, credit and lending, financial markets and insurance. So if fintech is the future of finance, then logic suggests that it should also have several domains as well, right? Exactly. Fintech is now an umbrella term with several subdomains. So in this video, I'm going to break down the various domains in fintech to share a better understanding of what each entails. If fintech is an area of interest for you or a possible career path, then watch this video to the end because you probably might be able to decide which domain you want to specialize in or has the most potential for a business or investment within your territory. Let's jump in. Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jeremy and if you're new here and haven't yet subscribed, please consider doing so because on this channel I speak about fintech, digital transformation and agile career development. Fintech has gone through so many changes and a lot of evolution in the past couple of years. The recent hype or boom of fintech can be attributed to the fact that Technology has advanced significantly across the globe. In 2008, when the financial crisis hit, institutions were forced to focus heavily on regulation, and that triggered innovation within the space. Smaller players were able to step in because the incumbent institutions lost the trust of the people and the people wanted more personalized services. In 2020, the pandemic made digital transactions a necessity and no longer a luxury of convenience. Fintech is easing the lives of customers worldwide and in emerging markets like Africa, we're seeing mobile network technology powering financial inclusion and bringing more and more people into the financial system. Fintech has changed the way we transfer money, borrow and lend, find and interact with customers, get insurance, engage with our banks, and the list goes on. All of these functions have now become subcategories or departments within the fintech ecosystem that various players are specializing in. We've heard of massive investments going into fintech sectors, so let's delve into the categories, namely paytech, regtech, lendtech, banktech, insurtech, and wealthtech. Let's begin with the most popular fintech category, which is paytech. And just like fintech, it's the combination of payments and technology. It includes everything ranging from everyday contactless transactions, e-wallet transfers, all the way to cryptocurrencies and the internet of things. It is the subset of the fintech industry that focuses on transactions and payments rather than finance as a whole. Now, the main idea behind paytech is that in the past, payments were just an exchange of money. I want something from you, I give you the equivalent value in cash, you give me the goods and I'm on my way. Pretty simple. But now with innovation in payment methods, mobile advancements in wearables and embedded finance, which is essentially integrating financial services into non-banking apps or platforms or websites like paying for something on Amazon or AliExpress, the way we make payments and transact has changed dramatically. More and more people are switching to mobile and digital payments, meaning that the customer experience of paying has evolved as well. Now, there is a massive opportunity to evolve the customer experience with innovation and technology, and that is the main focus of the Paytech subdomain. The payments industry is growing rapidly each year. Capgemini's 2020 World Payments Report showed us that Non-cash global transactions grew by 14% to approximately $700 billion in 2019, and that was even before the pandemic. In 2020, e-commerce sales grew by 209% according to ACI Worldwide, so you can see that the paytech industry is booming. Now, with regulations like PSD2 and open banking, we can only expect the growth to continue. There is continuous growth in e-wallet adoption, and the pandemic came in to encourage cashless transactions. Some are even predicting 1.3 billion mobile payment transactions will happen by 2023. So lots of players are joining the paytech industry to capitalize on these opportunities. Electronic money issuers, card network operators, payment service providers, and gateways are some of the popular ecosystem participants. So from the way things are shaping up and how rapidly we are transitioning towards digital, we can expect that in the near future, 
Paytech may not even be a subcategory of fintech, but will probably stand alone as a separate entity. Customers' expectations are changing constantly, and they will continue to demand for more online and digital payment avenues. So there's tremendous potential for growth in the Paytech subdomain. Next, we have RegTech or Regulatory Technology. Now, this term was first coined by the UK's Financial Conduct Authority, FCA, back in 2015. Now, they defined it as a subset of fintech that focuses on technologies that may facilitate the delivery of regulatory requirements more efficiently and effectively than existing capabilities. In simple English, RegTech is any technology that helps companies comply with regulations. Now, even though this subcategory is relatively young, RegTech is maturing rapidly. We have seen a number of huge market crashes and institutional fraud cases that caused a spike in the sheer amount of regulatory policies within the financial industry. In fact, according to Reuters Cost of Compliance report, a new regulatory update is implemented every seven minutes. These fines are hefty and are becoming more frequent and severe. Institutions are having to pay well into the billions of dollars in fines each year, so it's only natural that they would seek out the most innovative ways to ensure compliance. Rector companies emerge and are now leveraging machine learning, natural language processing, blockchain, AI, and other technologies in order to bring the power of digital transformation to the previously traditional world of regulatory compliance. Now, initially, the financial services industry met RegTech with a lot of doubt and hesitation, which is understandable because even though the solutions that RegTech presented are attractive, when it comes to regulatory compliance, there's very little room for error before you're hit with another hefty fine. A lot of the incumbent players wanted RegTech companies to prove their solutions before they would take any chances with them. That is where investors came to the rescue. Now, the investors understood the massive opportunity that existed within the space, and they backed it with their capital, and it was a lot of capital at that. According to the RegTech analyst, from 2015 to 2019, RegTech investments rose from $1.1 billion to $8.5 billion, and these investments helped to push the RegTech industry past pilots and out of the innovation space. Now, the boost they received from investors served as enough to convince financial institutions that the value that they provide was real and effective as long as it was implemented correctly and responsibly. Now, Rector creates greater efficiency and accuracy than the manual siloed processes, which causes those compliance gaps. And it also creates improved risk management and better internal alignment. So the future definitely looks bright for the Rector subdomain. Next on our list is LendTech. But now it's pretty obvious that it stands for lending and technology. And many of us have become familiar with finding services for our needs online. Getting loans or credits is no exception. As FinTech continues to grow and become more popular, consumers also start finding ways to access the services that they previously could only find in a traditional bank online. Lending technology became the new norm for people who were looking to secure a loan. So very simply, LendTech is a subdomain of fintech that focuses on providing loans and other forms of credit to people securely either online or via mobile telephony. Now, sometimes, lender companies partner with traditional financial service providers like banks and other times they do not need them at all. Some popular models of lender companies are peer-to-peer -peer or P2P lenders and crowdfunding lenders. Now, P2Ps connect potential borrowers to lenders or financiers online. Now, popular lend tech companies are Upstart, Lending Club, and Sophie. Crowdfunding platforms typically are a little different because they help connect people with money to people who need it, usually from a group of donors that are trying to raise capital or offer capital. Now, this isn't a typical credit form because the recipient isn't usually required to pay back crowdfunded capital. Now, there are buy now, pay later companies where you can make purchases and pay back in installments or on your own payment terms with no additional fees. Even in emerging markets such as Africa, there are revolutionary companies such as Jumo that are able to offer credit to the unbanked market by leveraging mobile network data and generating credit scores based on alternative data. Jumo has given out $4 billion worth of loans to people across the African market and have some of the highest collection rates. The fintech lending space is never stagnant and is constantly competing or collaborating with traditional banks for more secure and innovative forms of lending. For the banks that have been resistant to adapt technology trends, it has only given Lentex the advantage to meet those customer needs. Lentex are taking advantage of electronic platforms and alternative data 
to get accurate depictions of borrowers in order to better serve the market. So that's a space we should all expect big things to continue happening from. Banktech is next and it's pretty much the most self-explanatory. Banking technology is essentially technology for banks. As banking becomes more of something we do rather than somewhere we go, lots of traditional banks are undertaking internal digital transformation agendas. The target end result is to have a modular, API-driven, end-to-end digital banking platform to grant customers a unique experience. Obviously, banks are not technology institutions, and even though they may have technology departments, the main expertise and focus is on developing and delivering the best products to customers and also serving as those intermediators between the customers who have extra and those who want to borrow. And that's where bank tech institutions come in. These are the technology companies that come in to facilitate a bank's digital strategy and allows the bank to focus on banking. They leverage new and advanced technologies to enable banks to offer better services to customers in a secure, reliable, and sustainable manner to give the banks a competitive advantage in the industry. Now, bank tech is quite a broad category because it's inclusive of all the players that integrate with banks to assist them facilitate their services via APIs. Most of these players also fall under the other domains of fintech, so I won't go too deep into examples, but it's important to note that not all fintechs are looking to compete with the banks. In fact, it's actually a more reasonable play to collaborate with the banks and leverage their experience and capital to achieve better outcomes and that is the strategy of bank tech companies next up we have insurtech now following the same trend insurtech stands for insurance technology and it's the term that has been given to companies that are using technology to innovate and disrupt the insurance industry. Now, even though InsurTech is in its early stages, there are startup incubators dedicated solely towards InsurTech. Larger companies are collaborating with startups to update their offerings by taking advantage of technology like big data and AI. And this presents lots of new and exciting opportunities coming from within the space. Today's consumers want to be able to purchase travel insurance with a tap of a button or with a swipe and not fill lots of forms. InsurTech startups recognize this and want to do something about it. InsurTech companies are using data from wearable and mobile technology to create and offer more tailored policies. They're able to pivot away from hard copy documents to using online digital signatures as a means of verification. And the more advanced InsurTech companies are able to harness AI to take on the mundane and repetitive tasks that previously required an insurance broker. InsurTech is essentially aiming to leverage technology to improve the use user's experience with insurance, processing quicker claims, providing more user-friendly interfaces, eliminating the brick and mortar aspects, and simply making the previously boring insurance space exciting again. Now, this is a domain of fintech that is on the rise, and considering the size of the insurance industry, the potential for growth is exponential. And finally, we have wealth tech. Now, wealth tech emerged in response to that intersection between digitalization and the world of investment and world management. So it's a combination of wealth and technology that brings all the digital tools focused on facilitating the process of wealth management. As the other sectors of the financial industry are getting pressure to innovate due to the presence of more proactive and agile startups, it's only natural that the wealth management sector also begin to follow suit as well. One of the largest factors for the rise in wealth tech is that previously the most affluent people were the older generation of boomers who were content with traditional avenues of service. Now with the great wealth transfer on the way, the tech savvy generation X and millennials will possess most of the wealth and that generation has a preference for more digital tools. If you add the effects of the pandemic to the mix, then it makes it a no-brainer that wealth management or the wealth management industry has to evolve accordingly. More and more, we're hearing of robo-advisors, cryptocurrency trading apps, and social trading platforms. Technology is powering wealth management in the modern era and wealth tech has become an established subdomain of the fintech ecosystem. So friends, there you have it. Those are the various subdomains of fintech. For those who might have thought fintech was limited to just one area, I hope this has given you some better perspective of the myriad of opportunities that lie within the space. Regardless of whether it's a career you're pursuing, a business within fintech you want to start, or just an investment opportunity you're looking for, there will surely be a domain that matches 
your interest. I hope you found this video valuable and if you did, remember to hit the like button and leave me a comment and remember the place to grab your African themed prints is where Ghana and the link is in the description so you can go get yours at a discount. I hope you have an amazing week and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers guys.